What's up guys, Stuart Odin aka Yala Poppy here and I'm going to show you in this video three simple steps to lose weight and get shredded even if you have zero experience with fitness and nutrition and have never actually seen a vegetable or even eaten one or even know what a vegetable is, doesn't actually matter. Make sure you watch until the end of this video and see how this simple formula will take you from zero to hero in just 90 days, probably even less if you actually do what I tell you to do. So what is my goal with this presentation? Well, the first thing that I wanna do is show you why everything that you've been taught or many of the things or arguably most of the things that you know or think you know about fitness and nutrition are actually not true. The next thing I want to go over is I want to explain to you the only three things that you actually need to do to be fit and healthy. A lot of people, they think that being fit, being healthy requires all of these little minor decisions and all this nuance, but actually there's only three really things that you need to do to be fit and healthy. Number three, I want to show you one simple trick to melt body fat that nobody ever talks about. This is one of those things that you know, like I said, the mainstream fitness community, there are a lot of things that they're actually not allowed to talk about, and that's what they sacrifice in order to be able to appeal to the majority. Number four, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to get into the best shape of your life and stay there. Also, I'm going to show you why listening to the mainstream health and fitness experts is almost always a bad idea. And finally, the real secret to losing weight, regardless of what method you choose. So why is this program ideal for beginners? Well, it requires absolutely no experience to get started, first of all. Doesn't matter, you know nothing about fitness, you've never even seen the inside of a gym, you just eat whatever you want, you're the, the worst of the worst, weigh 500 pounds, does not matter. You, you need no experience to get started with these things. Uh, you can actually start right now with what you have in your house. Some of the things that I outline in this program, they do require equipment. Um, or a gym membership or something, but you don't actually need those things to begin right now. Like it, as soon as you're done watching this video, you can start with what you have in your house. Also these concepts, and this is arguably the most important thing, but these concepts will simplify fitness for you into a few effective behaviors so that once you understand these two or three things, you'll be able to, you'll, you'll have a lot more confidence going forward um, in the types of things that you do to actually get fit. Also, you're going to know exactly what to do to reach your fitness goal. This is, for me, one of the biggest things because a lot of people, they don't actually start or follow through with something because they don't know exactly what to do. They don't have a step-by-step -step program. Following these steps will 1000% guarantee success. I know it's not actually possible to, you know, be anything more than 100%, but if the point is that if you follow these steps, you're going to get the desired result. And also, you'll finally be able to lose the weight, get in shape, and rub it in everyone's face. If that is interesting to you, maybe you've always been the fat friend in the group or the out of shape friend and you know everyone kind of teases you for it. Well, when you finally get in shape and you're fit and you're ripped, you'll finally be able to rub it in all of their faces. Maybe not directly, but uh, indirectly at least, but that's optional. Okay, so let's talk about some common myths about getting fit. The first myth, the first thing that people think that they are completely wrong about is that you need to eat salad all the time, or you need to eat vegetables all the time, or you can only eat fruits and vegetables. Because what do we hear when we're growing up is that you got to eat fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables are healthy. So people who don't really know any better and who are trying to get in shape, you know, props to them for trying something, but they eat salad all the time because they think it's healthy and they end up undernourishing themselves and not actually giving them enough energy to go about their daily life, let alone exercise. So that's one of the myths. Number two, you can't ever eat ice cream, cookies, or other junk food. This is another huge myth. And in fact, if you talk to most fitness people out there or more, most people who are in shape, you'll know that one of the reasons, even if they don't admit this right off the bat, but one of the reasons why they actually work out and, you know, take steps to improve their health is so that they can do things like eat ice cream, cookies, junk food, and even drink alcohol. You know, we like that stuff too. Number three is that another myth is that you're just going to gain the weight back after you lose it, right? We've all seen these articles online that say 99% of people who lose weight end up gaining it back. And that might be true, but I guess it never occurred to these scientists who are doing these articles that these people who tried to lose the weight or who lost the weight and gained it back were just doing the wrong thing. Don't you think it's possible that everyone's just doing things wrong? 
especially in an area like fitness. Number four, a myth. Getting fit is, quote, too much work. It takes too long. It's too physically difficult for you. Um, you know, I guess that's relative how long something is or how difficult it is for you. But I think that most people are under the impression that getting fit is something that takes, you know, several hours per day and it's going to be physically, you know, uncomfortable for them. And, you know, working out does require effort. You can't just lie down and work out in bed. I mean, you know, well, you know what I mean? Um, but over, you know, af after you get used to it, it, it turns into be kind of a fun type of effort. It grows on you, which brings me to the next myth, which is that exercise is not fun. Now, this is just plain old 100% not true. And the only people who actually say this are ones who have maybe tried working out once or twice and said to themselves, I don't really like this. I'm not going to do this. And then they quit. Uh, everybody who works out regularly, they, they kind of know, even if it's not really discussed, that exercise is actually fun once you get used to it. Once you overcome the first maybe two or three weeks where it's a little bit uncomfortable, it's actually very fun. And let alone if you play a sport or if you go to group classes or if you train something like boxing, which can be fun exercise can be very fun. The next myth is that those quote fit fitness people are insufferable narcissists. All right. So look, maybe this one is a little, has, has a little bit of truth to it, but I think a lot of people who aren't fit, they have this idea of people who are fit that like they only talk about fitness and they're so boring and they don't drink and they won't eat a piece of pizza with you because they're so obsessed with how they look. I won't lie. Maybe there is a little bit of truth to this where fit people are more likely to do those things. But, um, you know, I guess that's just the price you have to pay. All right. So maybe this one is half true. The next myth is that you don't have enough time to get fit. Well, look, do you have five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day? I can show you right now how with absolutely no equipment, with no gym membership, all you need is a pair of shoes. And actually, if you have access to a grass field, you don't even need a pair of shoes in 10 minutes. And you can get a better workout than somebody who goes to a gym and pays a trainer and works out for an hour. I promise you. Next one is that you can't afford a gym. Come on, people. Planet Fitness is $10 a month. And as popular as Planet Fitness is, or as um, as many Planet Fitnesses, Fitness I, as there are, $10 a month, everybody can afford that. If you can't afford Planet Fitness, I don't know, I'll send you $10 a month so you can work out there. And the last myth is that eating healthy food is expensive. And this is just plain old 100% incorrect. In fact, I have many times walked around a grocery store and kind of marveled at the fact that the cheapest foods were actually the healthiest ones. Things like organ meat, right? Liver, for example. Liver is a perfect example. Liver is one of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet and you can get it for pennies on the dollar compared to, you know, a uh, steak or, or muscle meat. All right, so who is this program for? Number one, it's for sedentary, I'm sorry to use this term, fat people with office jobs. Maybe you sit around at work all day, you're at the desk eight hours a day, you don't actually do anything physical, and you've got an office job. It's also for skinny fat people who have no muscle mass. All right, skinny fat just refers to somebody who is not fat, they, they don't, you know, they don't have a high uh, body mass index, but they don't have any muscle. It's called skinny fat. This is also for stay at home moms. Listen, moms, if you're there, you're staying at home. I know, you know, mothers, you guys have a hard job and all that, but I also know that you spend probably a lot of time on the couch watching TV and you could spend 30 minutes a day when the kid is taking a nap or something, or when, when they're doing something, you could spend that time exercising and improving your body. And also all of this, you know, nutrition stuff as well. The next one is internet marketers who snack all day. Now, as somebody who used to exclusively work online, I I know what this is like. All right. Now, I always limited my eating frequency, which is something we'll go over later. But I know most people don't. Most internet marketers also don't do that. And it's, you know, it's very easy to gain weight when you're snacking all day. 300 pound plus super fats who gave up a long time ago. Okay. So if this is you, if you have really just let your body get completely out of control and you gave up a long time ago, this is for you because these concepts are very easy to understand and very easy to employ. You can start doing them right now. The next one is yo-yo dieters who have lost weight and gained it back. This is another good group of people who would benefit from this because these concepts are so simple. And not only are they simple, but they have long lasting effects. They're sustainable, I guess is what it is. 
Busy people with a nine to five job, believe me, I know you've got a nine to five job. You're tired at the end of the day. You don't want to spend an hour and a half going to the gym and working out, and you don't want to change what you eat because you're so exhausted from going to the gym. I understand, but if that's you, this is definitely for you. People who think they don't have time to exercise, like I said earlier, I can show you how to get an amazing workout, including cool down and warm up and stretching in 10 minutes a day. Binge eaters, anorexics, bulimics, people who have an eating disorder, if you are ready to change, okay, if you are not addicted to your uh, victim mentality, no offense, but, but a little bit of offense, if you're actually ready to change and you don't want to cling to this identity of having an eating disorder, then this program is definitely for you. Also, kids who want to lose weight and get in shape. If you're a kid and you're fat, I really I feel bad for you because it's probably your parents' fault. No offense, parents who are watching this, but it's definitely your fault. Um, this is for you if somehow you're watching this and you, uh, you know, have, uh, what's it called? Um, you know, if you're coherent enough to follow instructions, I guess. All right, so who is this not for? People who are looking for a quick fix. All right, people who think that they are going to starve themselves, which is different than fasting, by the way. You're going to starve yourselves for a couple of weeks to fit into that dress for your friend's wedding. This is not for you. Body positive people, healthy at every size, who think being fat is okay and they just like love how fat they are and have absolutely no desire to change. This is not for you. Vegans, Sorry, vegans. I'm really sorry. Vegetarians, maybe. Vegans, no, this is not for you. This program involves eating meat. Spoiler alert. Next one. If your attention span is less than nine seconds, you need minimum of a 10 second attention span to do this program. If you're happy with your current body and have no desire to change. All right. So if that's you, if you're happy with your current body, maybe you look great. Maybe you look, you know, not great. Um, but if you're happy with how you look and feel, then you have no desire to change. It's not for you. If you don't want to live as long as possible, okay, fact, the strategies in this program will extend your life, actually extend your life and make you live longer and have a higher quality of life as well. If you don't want to make other people jealous that you are sexy and they aren't, listen, it's a fact. Human beings, we're not all sunshine and roses. We have a darker side and some of that darker side sometimes involves making other people jealous that we are better than them in some way. And physical attractiveness, that's a very important way. If you don't want to be attractive to the opposite sex, hey, listen, you know, there's a reason why they call it the sexual marketplace, right? If you want to be more attractive, if you want a higher sexual marketplace value, then this is the program for you. If you don't want to enjoy the benefits of the, quote, halo effect, unquote, there's several famous psych psychology studies that show that better looking people get shorter jail sentences and they are perceived to be um, better at their job than they actually are just because they're good looking. And also, if you're already in amazing shape, this program is probably not for you. You know, you're already in amazing shape. Do you need to follow my instructions? You're obviously already doing something that works. And people who already know exactly what foods to eat to get the body, the body that they want. Yes, if that is you, then you do not need this. You're already on the right track. Okay, so look, being fat is actually not your fault. And I'm, I, I know that this is probably not what you've heard before. Maybe you've even heard me say something that's a little bit different. But at the end of the day, what being in shape really comes down to is doing the right thing right? You can have the best intentions in the world. You can want to change, but if you don't do the right thing, then it doesn't really matter, right? The famous quote is you can run west looking for, wait, what is it? Run, run east looking for a sunset. You're not going to find it because the sun sets in the west. Because look, there's so much conflicting information out there. Who should you actually believe? And while wanting to change is important because if you want to change, you'll try several incorrect strategies before you accidentally find the right one. But why should you have to do that? And look, the mainstream media and fitness people are bound by social niceties to say what's acceptable to the majority, right? They can't offend anyone. This is why fasting, like actual fasting, not eating for several days, is not really something that has gone mainstream yet because, you know, it's offensive to many people out there who still haven't wrapped their mind around the fact that this could possibly be a good idea. Also, many fitness celebrities on Instagram and YouTube, they are what we call fake natties. These are people who use performance enhancing drugs and don't disclose the fact that they use performance enhancing drugs. It's kind of a necessary evil of the fitness industry to, um, you know, to, to do things like this. I, to be fair, I've actually done this in the past myself. Um, but now, and a, a good, a good way of working around this is to just admit what you were using. 
Um, that said, most of the time you don't actually need performance enhancing drugs to get the body that you want. Uh, not to mention anything about the, the safety of using them long term. Gurus will actually keep things complicated. So you're confused and keep buying their stuff, right? If you make a plan and it's only got three or four concepts in it, that's a very easy plan. It's very easy to follow. But if you make a plan that has three different workouts, you know, or has five different workouts, one for every day of the week, and you need to learn all these exercises and you've got a specific meal plan that has 20 different recipes for the month and you have to buy all these ingredients, you got to go shopping and spend all this time. It's much more complicated and you kind of need the person more. You need the trainer more. You need their products more. You need their information more, which brings me to my next point, which is that the fitness industry and, and people in general, right? This is kind of your fault is that we as human beings, we prioritize information over transformation. For example, what do you think is more, is more valuable? Okay. Do you think, you know, billions or not billions, hundreds of hours of free information is more valuable than you paying somebody, let's say a thousand dollars a month for guaranteed change? right? I know it's, it's tempting for all of us to think, well, I have all the information for free. I can just go and do it on my own. Uh, you know, figure out what I need to do and then just go do it. It kind of, it makes sense logically, but, but what really is going to make the difference in whether or not you or anybody else changes, not just with fitness, with anything is being held accountable and actually transforming, having some sort of leverage over yourself to transform. Okay, now I want to end with this final quote or end this section where well, this is a quote from uh, Friedrich uh, Nietzsche where he says, the term contradicts himself. He's talking about common sense. Whatever can be common always has little value. All right, let's talk about me a little bit. Who is this fast talking man who we can't really see? This is me right here about to eat a nice little raw steak from Thailand. Uh, okay, so I have been obsessed with fitness for over 20 years. I am 36 right now. I started working out when I was 14. And I haven't really had a moment in my life where I have not been thinking about fitness and health. I've got easily 10,000 plus hours of actual hands-on experience, whether that is researching, whether that is actually doing fit things, whether that is comparing supplements, whether that is making videos, lots of time invested in this. I am also a certified personal trainer, not that that means much these days with ISSA, or at least, you know, in order to be a personal trainer, you need to do the continuing education credits. Uh, haven't actually done those, but I, I was, I guess, certified as a personal trainer at one time. Um, anyway, I have the knowledge basically is the point. Uh, I have expent, experimented with enough fitness regimens, eating schedules, nutrition combinations to rival Tim Ferriss. Okay, so Tim Ferriss, he wrote The 4-Hour Body. It's a very popular mainstream book that introduces some non-mainstream concepts similar to our good buddy Joe Rogan. I would argue that I have experimented with enough different plans that I could probably write a book. Maybe we'll call it The 3.5-Hour Body. Maybe I can one-up Tim Ferriss. And at this time of recording this video, I've got over 700 videos on YouTube, on my YouTube channel about fitness and nutrition. Also, fun fact, I am ex-military in the Israeli Defense Forces, Paratroopers Grade, Brigade uh, 890th Battalion Operations Company from 2006 to 2008. Now, wasn't always like this, all right? I wasn't always this sexy man that you see depicted before you with, uh, you know, abs and muscles and sometimes fabulous hair. Heartbreaking change actually, or pain actually made me change. Now, let's, I just, I want to kind of tell you a story about how I um, made the decision to get into fitness and, and how I really made the commitment because I can trace it back to one situation. Now, I was a chubby kid at 13. I was the type of kid I would go in the pool with my shirt on. I wasn't even fat. I was just chubby. I was ashamed of how I looked. And I, when I got to high school, uh, I was in PE class one day and you know, PE class, you do it outside. And I remember this day it was, it was very hot. And, uh, I rolled up my sleeves because it was hot and I wanted to get like a tan on my upper arms. And I was lying down on the ground and this girl who, you know, we'd flirt and I had a crush on her. She said, you have fat arms, just like casually remarking like, wow, your arms are pretty fat. Or she said, you have fat arms. And then 
I that that hurt me very badly when I heard that. I was like, oh my god, like here's this girl I like. I thought she liked me, and she just totally calls me out on my fat arms. And that was when I made the choice then and there to change my body. Okay, so like that was it. I'd had enough. I was like, all right, it's time to like handle this because I didn't want to experience any intense pain like that anymore. And to this day, I still kind of connect being out of shape with intense pain. Uh, anytime. I, uh, I, let's say I look at myself in the mirror and I don't look exactly how I want to look. It still makes me uncomfortable to varying degrees. All right. So who is Stuart Oden, AKA Yala Poppy? Let's talk a little bit about more about my background. I started working out at around 14. It was either 13 or 14. I'm, I'm not really sure how old I was exactly, uh, but it was very shortly after that time. Um, I was originally trained by an old school bodybuilder. Uh, this was somebody who used to work out at Gold's Gym in Venice. Uh, she was good friends with, and it was a she, by the way. She was good friends with the owner of several of the Gold's Gyms in Los Angeles. And um, she used to train with some big famous bodybuilders. You know, Arnold used to work out at the gyms she would go to. Uh, surprise alert, it was my mom. Um, my mom, very into fitness, and I would go to the gym with her when I was a little kid, and they'd put me in a little daycare area, and I was just kind of always around gyms at that time. And since then, since working out, I have done all kinds of sports, all kinds of fitness routines. I've done bodybuilding, powerlifting, football, like, you know, football practice, that style of training. I did karate. I did Muay Thai for a couple of years. I've trained in boxing. I did infantry training in the army and, you know, many more that I could fill up this entire page just listing them. Also, I learned ISSA's program so well that I would pass certifica certification tests for other trainers. So when I first started working as a, as a personal trainer at Powerhouse Gym, uh, back then gyms were less strict regarding trainers having an actual official personal training certification. Now it's a little bit different. But back then you could still get a job at many of these big name brand gyms without being certified. So I was one of the first people at that gym to get certified. And the gym was kind of in a transition where they were requiring everyone to get certified. And you had all these kind of veteran trainers who were good salespeople, really. And they, they were like physically attractive. So they had a lot of clients and they didn't want to actually spend the time to get certified. So they would pay me several hundred dollars to actually take the test for them online and pass the test for them. It was a nice little side hustle for me. Okay, so look, my mission, the reason I'm even mentioning all this is that my mission from here on out is to hold your hand and take you from whatever your current physical state is, I'm just assuming the worst here and assuming that you're an out of shape blob, to a sexy mofo. So you might be wondering, if you're so smart, Mr. Stuart Odin, Yala Poppy, how come you're not a personal trainer, all right? And the reason is this, is that I did not find being a personal trainer intellectually stimulating. Um, I, I personally prefer my my job, which is what many of us will do several hours a day for the rest of our lives, arguably the most you know time consuming thing we'll actually do. I like it to be intellectually stimulating and being fit can be simplified into three or four broad concepts that once you understand these concepts, fitness is not interesting anymore. In fact, I, like I, I have respect for some YouTube celebrities and fitness people. And if they have great bodies, like definitely props to them for doing the work. But I just kind of wonder to myself how they're able to um, talk about fitness all the time without being extremely bored about it. I don't know. It's probably a bad thing for me to say as I'm doing this video about it, but I mean, come on, it's, it's not hard people. Uh, and also working as a trainer in a gym is like being a therapist. Okay. Like you've seen people working out with their trainer. If you've been to a gym and they're doing the reps and the trainer's standing there with the clipboard and the client is talking about something that has nothing to do with the actual workout. They're talking about what happened to them that weekend or their husband problem or their boyfriend or girlfriend or their job and the trainer is bored out of his mind and he's pretending to listen while kind of maybe sort of counting the reps. Um, now all that said, working in a gym, it was fun, it was easy, it was a nice little like social status boost to be the trainer at the gym, but ultimately very boring for me and I wanted to do more. Okay, so as I was training, when I was, I would say I think 19 or 20 years old, I stumbled upon a book called The Warrior Diet, and this is written by an author named Ori Hofmichler, uh, who's also coincidentally Israeli. 
he was in Shayetet Shlosh which is a, it's like the elite Navy SEALs unit in the Israeli military. And long story short, he kind of discovered when he was in the military that he and his comrades performed better when they were training on an empty stomach. So this led him down the wormhole of researching, you know, limiting your eating frequency. And the book is, is an amazing book. Highly recommend you guys go read it. And the book makes the case for doing OMAD. And this is before OMAD was a thing. This is early 2000s. There was no intermittent fasting. There was no OMAD. There was no snake diet. There was none of this stuff. And this guy is kind of like set the stage for everything. So when I discovered this book in 2002, I immediately started implementing it. And uh, interestingly enough, I remember reading the jacket of the book in the bookstore. And there was a quote on there from somebody that said, um, I love I love this book. I love the style. I can eat whatever I want and I don't gain weight. And I was like, all right, I'll try it. Uh, and when I did start trying it, you know, I would tell everybody about it. I'm the type of person, if I'm doing something and I like it, everybody I know is going to know about it. Everyone thought I was crazy. They would say, you can't only eat once a day. You're ruining your metabolism. Meanwhile, I'm walking around shredded, looking amazing. And they are, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight. And I'm thinking to myself, why are you giving me advice on fitness when I clearly know more than you? And obviously kept doing it anyway and uh, just let the results speak for themselves. Now, when 2015, 2014 rolled around, intermittent fasting started getting a little bit more, you know, mainstream exposure. I felt much better. And I would even go back, you know, to people who I had known back when I started the warrior diet. And I would talk to them, not to rub it in their face intentionally, but they would say like, oh yeah, intermittent fasting. Have you heard of it? I just thought of you, you know, the warrior diet, because you would always talk about that. Anyway, the lesson here that we can learn or that I learned is that reducing your eating frequency will easily keep you lean, all other things being considered. Now, another major milestone for me was my military experience. Okay. Now, I don't want this to take up too much time in the video. Military, you know, I could make a bunch of videos on that. But when I was 22, moved to Israel specifically to join the army and uh, the the army in Israel, they're not very big on physical conditioning. They're not, uh, or at least in the unit that I was in. I was in, you know, like not an elite infantry unit, but a very high quality infantry unit. They did not care about physical conditioning. Their motto was like, can you carry this extremely heavy bag for a couple days? Uh, and can you, can you run up a, a small hill and point your gun in that direction and just kind of suffer in the wilderness for a couple days and eat cans of tuna with white bread? Yes. Okay. You're fit. So in order to be in shape in the military, it was up to us to train on our own if, if we wanted to, right? If, if you even cared, a lot of guys didn't care. I personally cared. And this was a challenge for me because when you are in the military, you work all day, every day, you're up at seven. You, you don't, you don't get to sleep in. There's no sleeping in. You don't get to like sleep in and decide what you want to do that day. You wake up when they wake you up, you go where they tell you to go. You do what they tell you to do. And you go to sleep when they tell you to go to sleep. Well, kind of, you stay up a little bit later, I guess when you're up for 16 hours, you don't really want to stay up much later than that. Anyway, the point is this is when I was working 16, 17 hour days, it meant that I had a very limited amount of time to train because I didn't want to stay up any longer than I had to. I don't want to spend an hour and a half in the gym working out when I, you know, exhausted from the day. So the lesson that I learned from this is that you can get an amazing workout in under 30 minutes and even sometimes 20 and 15 minutes we would work out. All right. So this is me looking super sexy, lifting a kettlebell because now we want to talk a little bit about kettlebells. All right. So when I was in the army, I would busy myself by reading books about fitness, right? I would download illegally all of these PDFs from this guy, Pavel Tsautselin. Uh, I think I'm saying that right. And this guy, he is a ex, uh, he, he used to be a physical fitness trainer for the Russian Spetsnaz or the KGB. I think it was Russian Spetsnaz. I don't think it was KGB. I think it was Spetsnaz, which is like the Delta force of the Russian military, super elite unit. And if you guys know anything about Russian physical fitness programs, you probably know that Russia as a country, no offense to any Russians, um, Russia as a country is a complete, you know, it's, it's not the United States. Let's put it that way. It's like a, 
it's, it's a wars it's the wild west you know uh, but their physical fitness program their physical training program is very high quality uh, so this guy he would talk about kettlebells and i remember reading about these kettlebells in the army i was like man this stuff sounds amazing builds functional strength you don't have to do cardio like it makes you like super strong and like works all your stabilizer muscles and works your core and there's only like five exercises that you have to do i gotta start doing this so when i got out of the army i ended up moving to tel aviv which is a major you know is the major metropolitan city in israel i was totally broke i had no money and for my birthday my mom sent me a hundred bucks because i told her i wanted to buy a kettlebell so she sent me the money. I went to this little like fitness supply store down on Diesengolf and I bought myself a 20 kilo kettlebell. Didn't have money for a gym membership. Didn't have money for anything. I would eat. I, I had no money for food. I would go to like the open air market and I would buy um, ground lamb by the kilo because I that was like what I could afford. I would spend like ten dollars a week on meat and that is all i would eat anyway the point is this didn't have a gym only trained with the kettlebell and i was shredded right this is like me you know this is from a workout video that i put on my youtube channel the video is kind of old but you can see very defined very lean muscles very dense and this is all from just kettlebells maybe some pull-ups and stuff here and there maybe a little bit of running here and there uh, i had a bike also i'd ride around town but most of it was from the kettlebells all right so now that we've kind of established the broad concepts, let's let's simplify them and talk about them in very direct terms. Let's sum them up in one sentence. The first simple step for getting in shape, number one, limit your eating frequency, okay? You can do, and we'll go over other types of eating frequent, like the, the different schedules that you can adopt if you want. Um, but that's, that's generally the first one. The next one, eat 80 to 90% of your calories from meat and eggs, okay? This has, lots of benefits and we'll go over those again later the third one is do some sort of anaerobic exercise weight training combat sports crossfit etc you don't have to do kettlebells you don't have to go to the gym you don't have to do anything specific i'm not saying you have to do this or that you just have to do something and everything that you do should fall into one of these categories i guess not everything that you do but just keep in mind that when you're thinking about being fit and making yourself more fit that what you're going to do is going to be in one of these categories. And then I wrote here for emphasis, yes, it really is that simple because it really is that simple. You might not want to believe it. You might believe that getting fit is this complex nebulous thing, but it's not. It really is that simple. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about how diets work for weight loss. This is a cheeky little infographic that I found online, and it's very succinctly illustrates that all of these eating programs are the same okay low carb keto low fat intermittent fasting weight watchers what's that one at the bottom there uh paleo right any any sort of eating plan that you choose and this includes omad or eating mostly meat or carnivore or vegan or whatever anything that you choose you are going to lose weight because of a caloric deficit that is it bottom line calories in calories out now to be fair this does not paint the entire picture because if you do not eat nutrient dense foods let's take an extreme example let's say you eat a thousand calories of pure white sugar as opposed to a thousand calories of i don't know beef what do you think is going to make you feel better and perform better and just have a better life in general regardless of losing weight right 100%, 1000% the beef. If anybody says otherwise, I, I don't know. Why are you even watching this video? Like, are, are you serious? Come on. But anyway, just goes to illustrate the point that um, weight loss comes down to calories in, calories out. Okay, this is the big secret that people who promote these types of diets, they, they don't really tell you or they kind of do tell you like out of the side of their mouth, but it's very important. Now, the reason that I like limiting your eating frequency is because it does not require any thought, right? If we go back to these ones, these all require thought. Oh, can I eat this? Does it have carbs? Does it not have carbs? Oh, does this have, you know, fat or not? Does it have like, does this have fat? Intermittent fasting, oh, it has to do it this time or that time. I guess intermittent fasting is closer to what we're doing. Weight watchers, you have to count the points. It's too much work, right? And like I said, once you once you narrow fitness down to a couple broad concepts, it's no work at all. I've got a picture of my best friend here, Mr. Snake Diet Man, who is gives very good advice on fasting. Um, 
but this is kind of the the main idea of limiting your eating frequency this is the benefit as i see it which is that you don't need to micromanage anything okay you do not need to micromanage anything you eat once a day that's it what do you eat during the day nothing what do you eat at night meat and eggs right we'll go over that later when you eat once a day it's easier to be a caloric deficit because you're not eating anything all day it's also easier to control your insulin levels right this is something this is kind of like a little footnote that says that if you eat foods that will spike your insulin, you are more likely to gain weight. That's not really, I don't want to get into that too much now. Just kind of accept that as a fact. Also, when you only eat once a day, autophagy will kick in and burn stored fat. Autophagy refers to the process of your body getting rid of everything that it doesn't need um, in a, while you're in a fasted state. So just that's that's a broad definition of it. Uh, also, when you eat once a day, you will have more energy because you won't have those insulin spikes. Also, when you eat once a day, you, that's supposed to say you do much more to get, uh, you, you, you don't much more time to get things done. Okay. A little bit of a typo here. What this should say is you have much more time to get things done. I don't know why that says don't. Um, but anyway, when you eat once a day, all of the time that you would have spent buying food and cooking food and eating food and recovering from eating food or driving to the restaurant and ordering at the restaurant and eating the food at the restaurant and then recovering from the food that you ate at the restaurant, you don't have to do any of those things. And once again, bottom line, it's low effort and it gives excellent results. Very low um, you know, work to reward ratio here. What are some of the ways that you can possibly limit your eating frequency? Number one is to do OMAD, one meal a day. Very simple, very straightforward, does not require a lot of thinking. The warrior diet, as mentioned earlier, this is a little bit outdated, but still highly recommended compared to the way that most people eat. You undereat during the day, you can have little snacks, maybe a piece of fruit, maybe a vegetable here and there, and you overeat at night, you stuff yourself. Rolling 48s, this is where you eat one meal every other day. This is very effective and it is virtually impossible to not lose weight when you are doing this. On the extreme end of fasting, we have 4872. This is for people who have a lot of weight to lose and they don't mind to go a long time without eating. Very good for losing weight, where you fast for 48 hours, you eat, and then you fast again for 72 hours. And then you repeat this process. This is a very aggressive fasting schedule. And then the snake diet, this is kind of just a broad concept where you fast for extended periods of time and you drink something called snake juice, which is really just water mixed with sodium, potassium, magnesium, uh, minerals, basically. All right, let's talk about eating meat and eggs. Just do it, people. Just do it. If you're a vegan for ethical reasons, I respect you. You're an amazing person, really. But to get everything that you need from eating vegan foods is not likely. And, you know, it's the sad truth that many people are vegan just to mask an eating disorder, specifically, you know, anorexia. Uh, well, m mainly anorexia. Uh, one of the benefits of eating meat and eggs is to keep you from binge eating, all right? When you eat meat and eggs, you are very full for a very long time. You are satiated. You do not want to snack. And even if you do snack after stuffing yourself on meat and eggs, the snacks will be less delicious to you. And you'll be like, this isn't even that good. Why am I eating this? And I know you might've felt like that before, but believe me, when you start eating lots of meat and eggs and then you eat your snacks on top of it, it is way different than not eating those meat and eggs and just trying to eat those snacks. You can eat a lot more when you do it that way. And that's not good. All right. It'll also supply your body with all the nutrients that it needs. Case in point, liver is one of the most, if not the most nutrient dense food on the planet. And you could theoretically eat only liver and you could not only survive, but you could thrive. I'm not recommending that. It's not the most fun thing to do, but it is very, liver is very nutrient dense and all meat is as well, if not as much as liver. It'll also help you build more muscle, which will improve your metabolism, your resting uh, resting metabolism, your TDEE. Basically, when you have more muscle on your body, you will burn more calories at rest. Also, meeting, eating meat and eggs uh, tastes delicious. And finally, most importantly, it does not cost you a lot of money. It doesn't. Like... Meat and eggs, anything anything natural is not going to cost you a lot of money to eat. Eggs are 99 cents for a dozen. Somebody who's eating eggs every day, how many eggs could you could you eat, you know, possibly? How many eggs could you eat, really? Two dozen eggs, maybe, if you're working out super hard. Two dollars a day, that's not a lot of money, people. And sorry, once again, bottom line, it's low effort, gives excellent results. Now, common questions. People always ask, well, can I eat this? 
And I want you, and this is for beginners, right? There is a little bit more nuance in this. You know, there are other things that you can eat, of course, but in the beginning, we want to keep things simple. So when you're asking, can I eat this? Ask yourself these questions. Is it some kind of animal flesh? Is it some kind of animal organ? Is it beef, pork, chicken, fish, goat, lamb, lobster, whale, monkey, or something similar? I, I don't know if you should actually eat monkey. It's probably not a good idea to eat monkey, but depending on what part of the world you're in. Is it some kind of egg? Egg. You guys know what eggs are. Chicken eggs, duck eggs, lizard eggs, pheasant eggs, ostrich eggs. Is it fresh? Okay, this is my personal preference. I prefer fresh to frozen. Uh, if you have the extra dollar to spend on it, you know, buy, buy the fresh meat, people. Come on. I, do I need, really need to tell you why? Uh, do you buy it in the grocery store or a butcher shop? Right? I guess... That's probably misleading. I guess I should just say, do you buy it in the butcher shop? But anyway, the point is this, is it meat or eggs? Yes, then you can eat it, right? In the beginning, again, like I said, obviously there's more nuance to it than that, but this will get you first through the first 90 days and you'll see amazing results once you make this simple switch. Okay, exercising with kettlebells. Now, again, like I said in the beginning, you don't have to do this, but my, you know, my, my theory, my like main one of the principles by which I live my life is I like to keep things simple, right? I want to reduce everything to as simple a concept as possible so that I can start working on it right away without getting bogged down in all the tiny little details. I'm not saying I don't want to learn those tiny little details. Of course I do. But like, tell me the, give me the one sentence explanation so that I can start working on it now and learn all the rest of the stuff on the way instead of researching something for two, three, four weeks and then doing it. So what are the benefits of training with kettlebells? Number one, you work your entire body, all right? There's no complicated workout plans here. I mentioned earlier, some other fitness people that have programs and nothing against them. They're all amazing people. I love them all. But when you have a workout plan that has five exercises and you do those five exercises, that is a lot different than a workout plan that has one day that you do biceps, one day triceps, one day shoulders, one day legs, one day back, one day chest, one day core. And you know, six different exercises for each workout, right? Plus you have all this other stuff that goes into it. What do you think is easier? And if it's easier, what do you think most people are going to do more often? Also kettlebells will give you more functional strength and not quote dumb muscle. All right. Because of the shape of the kettlebell, it is very awkward and you need to use stabilizer muscles to stabilize your body when you're swinging it around. Um, it is much, it, it engages your entire body more than more like bodybuilding style exercises will do that will give you, um, uh, you know, that are more isolated movements. Also, training with kettlebells will keep you lean because these are full body exercises and can be performed either with high reps or low reps, by the way, depending on the weight. Um, they will keep you lean. They are arguably even a substitute for cardio, depending on how you do them. And if they're not a substitute for your cardio, they will help you with your cardio. Kettlebells will help you with your cardio because if you do them at a low enough weight, you can do enough reps to do them for you know, 15, 20 minutes. That's definitely going to help with your cardio if that's important to you. You can also build an impressive, um, impressive, powerful body packed with hard muscle. Okay, if you want to go back to this awesome gif of me working out, super lean, packed with hard muscle, very dense muscle, and you know that's that's one of the benefits of working out with kettlebells. I wasn't born looking like that. I wish. Uh, also, not going to cost you a lot of money, all right? Kettlebells are cheap, relatively speaking. You can buy a kettlebell. Now, I paid about 100 bucks for that kettlebell in 2008. That's because, you know, international shipping to Israel is very expensive. Everything's more expensive in Israel anyway. But if you're in the United States, you can probably go to your local Walmart and you can buy expensive kettlebells, or sorry, you can buy heavy kettlebells, and they won't cost you a lot of money. Again, bottom line, low effort gives excellent results. And this is kind of, like I said, a pattern in my fitness philosophy, where when I say it's low effort, I mean, it, it doesn't require a lot of thinking and it gives excellent results. Again, benefits of using kettlebells. They allow you to do Olympic lifts, all right? Things like the clean and jerk or the clean or the snatch. These are exercises that Olympic weightlifters use, uh, do and compete in. And if you ever look at any Olympic lift, uh, weightlifters should put a, a picture in here, but they are jacked. They are jacked with super hard muscle and super strong also. And next point, Olympic weightlifters are some of the most powerful athletes on the planet pound for pound. They are 
monstrous, those guys. You would not want to piss them off in a dark alley or in a brightly lit alley either. Now, look, what's the problem with Olympic lifts? They're great, but they're not easy to do unless you use a kettlebell. Teaching somebody how to do a snatch is not easy with an Olympic bar and weight on the bar. It is very hard, it requires a lot of flexibility, a lot of training with technique. You have to do it with like no weight in the beginning. It's tough. But if you use a kettlebell because of the way the kettlebell is shaped and because you're only doing it with one hand, it's much easier. Also, they're relatively cheap and the training can be done at home. How nice is that? You never have to come up with another excuse to not work out with your kettlebell because you've got one. You've got a couple in your house. You don't have to go to the gym, put your shoes on, drive over there. No, you've got the kettlebell right there. You can do it there. Using heavy weights means you can be done with your workout in 30 minutes or less. Honestly, when I was working out, you know, I, I remember times when I've been training with a kettlebell, it's been so heavy that I've been able to do my workout in 15 minutes. And I looked, you know, fabulous just as a result of doing those workouts with a very short amount of time. Also, they build functional strength, grip strength, core strength, and make you look sexy. All right. Like I said earlier, functional strength, grip strength, because when you're using the kettlebell, you have to grip it very tightly at certain points in the movements. So it'll improve your grip strength. It'll make your forearms bigger um, and uh, core strength as well without really having to do any sit-ups or anything like that. And obviously make you look sexy, which is the most important thing. What are some of the types of kettlebell exercises? One of them is the swing, which is this exercise you see depicted here. Uh, they're good for warming up. They're good for core strength. They're also good for glutes when you do it at the top of this movement, and also they improve your posture. The clean is a little bit different. It's more for building explosive strength and also builds your shoulders as well, your deltoids. The high pull is very good for your back. The snatch is a very good exercise. I call it the ultimate exercise because it kind of works everything. The squat thrust, which is what you see me doing in this right here, where you squat down and then stand up and do a press, that is brutal, brutal. But when you do them, you get a lot of good results very quickly. Turkish get up, this is kind of uh, hard to, under uh, to explain, but basically you lie down on the ground and you hold the kettle up, uh, the kettlebell up in front of you. And then you have to stand up in a very specific way while holding the kettlebell above your head the entire time. So very good exercises that you can do and all the kettlebell exercises, they will all build core strength and they will all work your entire body to varying degrees. So what are some questions that I get all the time? And there are a lot, but one of them is that, do I have to eat only meat and eggs? Like I know you said eat only meat and eggs like a bazillion times, but do I really only have to do that? And technically no, you don't. But if you're a beginner, yes, you do. Like chances are that what you're eating right now is probably not as good as only meat and eggs and making the switch to meat and eggs is going to be much better and it's also going to be sustainable. So eventually, yeah, okay, you can work in other stuff. Of course, I'm not saying you can't have things like olive oil or garlic or onions or like a side of broccoli or something. But again, like I said earlier, you want 80 to 90% of your calories to be made from meat and eggs. This will help you immensely. Can I eat junk food? Yes, you can eat junk food. Just make sure you eat your meat and eggs first. Should I cancel my gym membership? I mean, if I'm going to be using these or like if you actually choose to use kettlebells instead, should you cancel your gym membership? I would say no, because even when you have kettlebells, you're still probably going to want to go to the gym just for the social aspect of going to the gym. Plus, kettlebells are great. You get a great result with them. But there are certain things that you cannot do with kettlebells that you can only do with equipment that you get at the gym. So if it's not cost prohibitive, yes, keep your gym membership. Do you recommend any supplements? I recommend a lot of supplements. I love supplements for getting the job done faster. However, for now, let's keep it at creatine and agmatine. They're both very safe, very well studied. Creatine is an amino acid and agmatine is a metabolite of an amino acid. So they're both, um, you know, natural, you could argue. Is coffee good for you? I like to use coffee. Some people disagree and they say coffee jacks up your cortisol and it's not good and it's, you know, bad and you should feel bad if you drink it. I drink coffee a lot. I had a nice little cup of coffee for this video right here. I have a cup in the morning, two, sometimes three cups a day, sometimes just one. It depends. I think it's fine. Can I do, you know, fill in the blank while faxing, fasting? Uh, the answer to this question is to try it and find out, right? It's not possible to come up with an answer to every single one of these. Like, can I do this while fasting? Can I do this while on OMAD? Like, just try it and, and notice how you feel and figure it out on your own. All right, so look, 
first of all, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some value out of it, right? I think that I gave a lot of good advice here, if I do say so myself. And uh, if you start implementing these things right now on your own, you know, you definitely will make progress. But you've got two choices. Number one, you can either spend the next one to five years trying to figure out exactly everything that you need to do in these broad concepts, right? How to structure a workout, how to have proper form when doing the exercises, how often to do cardio, how often to take a rest day, how much food that you should eat per day, how fast you should be losing weight, how to deal with haters in your life, right? People who try to bring you down because you're trying to lose weight, how to deal with friends and family who aren't supportive and try to sabotage you. It happens. It's very common. I had to deal with it. Like I said, when I was doing the warrior diet, everyone was trying to sabotage me despite the fact that I had much better results than any of them. How many reps and sets to do per workout, how to eat, how different eating schedules affect your body, how to properly utilize supplements to lose weight even faster. There are things that you can use beyond creatine and agmatine that will help you drop the weight even faster. How to integrate fasting with exercise, one of the best ways to supercharge your weight loss, uh, you know, journey is to exercise while fasting but if you don't do it the right way you're headed for trouble how to avoid doing cardio and still lose weight if you want the pros and cons of different types of cardio and most importantly what i think to be most importantly healthy desserts you can eat guilt-free your other option get on a call with me where we can talk we can have a strategic session to help you get the body that you want in 90 days without figuring everything out on your own right now when i'm recording this it is the beginning of april and if let's just say if you start tomorrow let's just say you're like you know what i want to do it i want to finally handle this issue if you want to start tomorrow 90 days from now we'll be in the middle of july plenty of time still left in summer to show off your summer body to get you know attractive members of the opposite sex to actually be interested in you to go to the pool and take your shirt off without feeling bad to you know i don't know impress people i guess to live a healthier life to live a better life to live longer to finally handle this issue once and for all if that is interesting to you at all click on the link below book a phone call with me i don't have a lot of you know this is not something i'm not going to do like 20 of these a day so it is first comes first serve i would love to help all of you i would love for all of you to sign up with me you know right now but it is first come first serve and uh yeah that's basically it so if that's interesting to you click on that link below book a call with me let's handle this issue for you and if not i wish you the best